are listening to a ministry resource of Prebstal Church. Prebstal Church exists to build up the kingdom of Jesus by spreading the gospel in East Vancouver, Washington. For more information, please visit our website at prebstalchurch.org. Today we're talking about preaching, which fits well with our first episode where we talked about liturgy. Our conversation was running long and we didn't get a chance to really flesh preaching out very much, which is a shame since the preaching of the word is the most important aspect of our Sunday mornings together. And today we will discuss why that is. So thanks for joining us once again. So to kick off, Brian, would you share with us your understanding of preaching and its significant in the church? Oh, wow. Well, uh, preaching is, the, like you said, the central element of our Sunday worship service. It's uh, where God's word is presented and where we uh, apply it to our lives. You know, we're, uh, it's there to change us. That's why we come Sunday is to hear God's word and apply that to our lives. I think of it as if, if Sunday morning, if the Sunday worship service is a, a meal, uh, the, the sermon is the main course. Hmm. So in the, uh, I'm thinking the other elements, the little garnish. We talked about this during liturgy. So yeah. Never, I won't go there. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, yeah. Teaching and preaching are different, mm -hmm. right? Teaching is more informative. If you think about being in class at any grade, you know, grade school, high school, whatever, college, it's always the same. It's, it's just a lecture with information. But preaching is more transformative. It, it like you say, it, it urges change and application. It, it urges repentance, and and, and it <clears throat> it makes the text applicable to our modern times. It, it takes a text that had an original audience, and and big word warning, big word contextualizes. That is, adapts it from the original context to our context to make it practical in many ways. Yeah, like what does this have to do with me now. right I mean that's that's I, I uh, so having grown up in church okay and uh, I've heard a gazillion sermons you know different preachers and all and uh, you use the example of uh, teaching is like you're being t uh, information and if I think of it as a being in grade school you have the nice teacher teaching you how to do cursive or you know spell your letters and that kind of thing and as a young kid, my view of preaching or understanding of preaching was like, that's more like getting sent to the principal's office and told what you did wrong, you know, all that kind of stuff. So um, I'm going off on a tangent here, I guess, but I, I don't want preaching to be like that. Right. You know, I don't want right. to be the, the school principal scolding people. Right. So, but at the same time, uh, it's a, like you said, it's a call to action. Right. And it's, uh, there, there has to be a response. Right. Oftentimes when we think about the Bible just as being God's revelation, our understanding kind of stops there, right? It's, which is, that's absolutely true. But it's so much more than that. It, the Bible isn't just information that's written down, that's old, antiquated, and boring. The words of God in his word, they are living and they are active, as the uh, author of Hebrew tells us. Which means that when God speaks, things are going to happen. God's word isn't going to return void. It will accomplish what it sets out to do. Isaiah 55, 11 says mm -hmm. that. Uh, also, Ezekiel 37, the valley of dried bones, the word of God going forth and bringing to life that with which was once dead. Well, there's a great power to God's word. And the same word that spoke light into the darkness of creation spoke life into the darkness of my own heart. So if we're to say that God's word is living and powerful, then the preaching of it is as well. It's not just God's word written, but God's spoken word, which gives life. What is, this is interesting to me as, as you're explaining it uh, that way. And, you know, I've thought of this before, but it's always new when we're looking at each other with headphones on yeah, and stuff. Right. Blocked so, uh, by microphone. <laughs> right. So uh, the Ezekiel 37 passage, you know, that mm -hmm. God's word speaking into dry bones and they come to life. Yeah. And uh, I think, all right, so preaching on a Sunday, the preacher has nothing to do with that. Right. Other than he's the vehicle for. He's a microphone. Like these mics right in yeah, front yeah, of us. Yeah. And, and it's the Holy Spirit doing this work amongst the people that brings to life. Right. And uh, that's something to, it's, 
I, I could see how uh, it would be easy to think that you know the preacher's doing this right because you know the presentation is such that it engages people sure but really you don't want that to be the case right it needs to be God's word and his spirit at work amongst his people corporately mm -hmm. you know in that moment where we're all experiencing a passage together right that that works within each of us in various ways well and I think one of the best practices in that that you're describing is for the preacher to get better at getting out of the way yeah speaking the word clearly now we'll talk about what we mean by that in just a, a couple of minutes we're we're going to do kind of a Q&A um, regarding this topic but this really is where good interpreting practice comes in mm -hmm. it, it's to keep us from messing up the text to to use the human element which is to present and speak God's word for his people but but to get it out of the way of the text which is important well so for questions, unless you have anything to add to that. I'll think, I'll think of something. Some <laughs> You'll point. think of something in a minute. Okay. <laughs> okay. So explain to our listeners what role preaching plays in the life of Prepsal Church. Well, like we said, it's the central part of our Sunday morning, mm -hmm. right, of the, of the worship service. But if you think about it, we are uh, affected by the gospel of Christ in the first place. That's why we've all gathered here mm -hmm. is because we've said, We've surrendered our lives to Christ. That that's, you know, the uh, that's the reason for gathering because we are brothers and sisters in Him, being made new. Mm. So we need to be nourished, right, and fed. That's the uh, importance of the word preached, uh, taught, uh, applied, right, challenged by. Mm. Uh, that's how we are to grow. We, Absolutely, and, and it's that whole process of continually submitting our lives to Him. And we do that by applying his word, his truth, right? It's not just we're reciting a bunch of rules to obey. Right. You know, this is God's word applied to our lives, and it makes a difference that way. Well, and I, I think a big picture of it are the expectations that people bring to church with them. Mm -hmm. Is somebody expecting to just learn, to get information? Or is somebody expecting to come and be confronted by God, the maker of the universe, the, the giver of life, the Savior Almighty, and then changed as a result. Yeah. Are we expecting that? I think that that plays a, a huge key. You know, one thing I was thinking about on my, on my drive over here mm -hmm. is examples in my own personal life, that, that is my individual experience with the Lord, is often like the micro example of the macro uh, congregational aspect of what happens at church. So, for example... If I confess with my mouth Jesus and say that verbally, but then don't live it out, that's what good is it, mm -hmm. right? Um, now, uh, I forget which author in the New Testament, but says like it, if we if we don't have love, then that's part of it, absolutely. Then we're just like clanging cymbals and loud yeah. gongs. Now, I think Paul, about that. First Corinthians thirteen. Right? Excellent, yeah. right? And I think in my own life, if my deeds don't match my confession right mm -hmm. um but that's the same in our church now i think I, I think i'm shifting a little bit from this question but i think it helps to clarify the role that preaching plays in our church because if we're all about preaching and we're not about life doing life and being changed by it then we're boring and i i I've, I've been part of churches that are just so focused on preaching and that was it that that would that was literally it there was no shepherding, discipleship, and things like that really happening. I'm glad you said shepherding, discipleship. I was thinking singing and dancing. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so really what I'm, I'm talking about is the preached word that is resulting in action in good deeds, the mm -hmm. fruit of preaching. And so really, I guess what I'm accentuating here is the value of, uh, well, it's kind of like a two-sided coin, right? Preaching on one side, but living it out on the other. And they are equally as important to one another and we don't want to get lost in either but what we do is informed by our preaching and uh i think that's largely the role that it, it plays in our church as well yeah if, if you'd agree well and and how i simplify it for my small mind is uh you know like we talked about earlier teaching is information right and a good teacher uh instructs a student how to learn mm. okay so teaching you know is valuable oh, yeah. in that um it's in preaching is that plus 
sure. right? Uh, plus the call to action, the mm. uh, uh, apply this to your life. You know, you've heard this truth. Now, what are you going to do about it? Right. You know, that kind yeah. of a thing. It, it elicits a response. Mm. And, there, and there must be a response. Uh, and that's going to be different for different people in different, uh, you know, situations in all. For sure. So, yeah. Well, moving on, what is the relationship of preaching to solid in, in interpreting practices? Hmm. Well, starting off with uh, any given biblical text is got to be understood within the whole of Scripture. Hmm. Uh, Jesus did this in uh, Luke 24 when he explained to the disciples on the road to Emmaus. You know, he went back beginning with Moses, you know, hmm. the very beginning and explaining about himself through all of scripture. And I, I think that's just a key picture. That's one that sits well in my head or vividly um, as a reminder that, no, the, the whole point of the gospel, you know, of scripture given to humanity is God is saying, uh, here's how to be reconciled to your creator. Hmm. And the whole picture of that, not just, you know, here's some rules, right? you know, here's, here's some prayers, Here's some comforting words. You know, there's all of these things in Scripture, mm. but the whole point of it is that we are reconciled to our Creator. And so keeping that in, in mind, uh, you know, as far as in, interpreting, reading, studying the Word, and preaching, you know, remembering that big picture is key, I think, because otherwise it's really easy to just get all enamored with little details right here and there. So, yeah. Well, you jumped ahead a couple of questions, which is good. I was going to ask, what does Jesus have to do with preaching? And you said it. If Jesus in the gospel is kind of that that main cinch line in our Bible that pulls everything tight and co cohesive together as a unified work from Genesis to Revelation, then then he is absolutely central to to our preaching, mm -hmm. to to um, the if preaching is a call to change, then it's a call to to um, uh, what am I trying to say? It's a call to the gospel. It's a call to grasp the gospel. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So what is the value of expositional preaching? So expositional preaching. So going through uh, a book or a, a series of books or passages, verse at a time, you know, hmm. it's going linearly, I guess would be a way to, to think of it. The As opposed to, uh, taking a topic and saying, what does the Bible say about this? I think I'll do a sermon about, you know, being nice or, or right. you know, or, or a, an applicable, applicable, applicable <laughs> type of a thing. Um, you know, how, how should I treat my neighbor? What does the Bible say about loving your neighbor? You know, right. says a few things. Yeah. Um, so the difference between those two is, is one is starting with God's word and taking that to us. Right. As mm. opposed to taking something from our perspective and seeing what the Bible says about it. Right. So right. the uh, no, I forgot your the relationship between preaching. Uh, well, we oh, moved no, on to the, the value, value of the expositional value, yeah. preaching. Right. So the, the value of that. And, and I'm, I, I see there's value in both. Right. Okay. So there's, and, and I kind of like to think in terms of do a bunch of expositional sermons and do some topical sermons. Yeah. Sometimes you sprinkle them in here and there. Right. Uh, because we've got to soak in God's word in different ways. Yeah. So the, the value of the expositional part is that it gets the focus off of us and onto God's truth, his word, right. uh, and what he's doing. And then it applies you know, it affects change sure. in us that way, yeah. as opposed to, uh, you know, uh, looking for an answer to a specific question, which we do that as well. Right. But uh, that's that's the value there. Yeah, absolutely. There's there's nothing wrong with topical sermons. Right. It seems to present more danger of inserting your own truth or opinion into into the message itself at least in in my experience yeah. whereas expositional is just letting it's a practice which allows the text to speak for itself more accurately right too and so and keeping in mind all the different genres of scripture oh yes so that changes things up as well i yeah. mean the bible is so dynamic mm -hmm. in uh all that is contained within sure and uh I'm I'm amazed, you know. I uh, there is a lot of details. 
Yeah. Right. So I'll just take a quick moment to pitch an uh, upcoming Bible exposition class. If anybody's interested, talk to me. I've written the curriculum. I'm going through it with the with the kids in Sunday school. It's been really good. Nice. But it opens our eyes to the complexities of what you're talking about. Keeping Jesus as the center of the story. Um, understanding a, a text in its context and using, uh, yeah, solid rules to, to do that. So there, yeah. there's a lot going on behind the scenes. Well, getting more practical at this mm-hmm. point. So how many hours a week would you say that you spend yeah. preparing a sermon? That one is a difficult question to answer. Yeah. I have uh, on my calendar and scheduled, I have time allocated. I can spend, you know, up to actually even more than 20 hours if I needed to. Um, typically, it's about 15 hours. Where, where I say it's difficult is how do you count some of that time? Because I can mow the lawn and be mulling <laughs> over, you know, what's going on. Sure. I've studied, you know, during the morning and I got to get outside and, uh, you know, that kind right. of thing. So how do you count that time? Yeah. Is that, you know, actual sermon prep time or is that, you know, just letting it percolate? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How do you count that? So uh, what I, I typically do, you want to know my process? Yeah. Okay. That's the next question. So <laughs> okay. there we go. Keep going. So like I said, well... I haven't told you this yet, but you probably know it already. I do my best thinking first thing in the morning. So it's so helpful to do podcasts like this in the evening. You're you're getting the worst of my head right now. (laughs) We could do this at 6 a.m. if Adam would prefer. Well, then it cuts into sermon prep time. That's true. So anyways, I I allocate mornings. I spend the first two, three hours uh, praying and studying. Hmm. And uh, Tuesdays and Wednesdays are all about soaking in. And that's where I just write down notes. I'm reading the text, writing down observations, uh, questions. What is this in here for? What does this mean? Right. Why is this? You know, and, and who's this guy? And, you know, that kind of stuff. Any kind of questions, I just write all these down in my notes. And uh, I, write, I keep them in a, in a journal so that I can reference them easy. And then uh, sometimes I even will draw little pictures or diagrams or something like that. You know, it's, it's helpful for me to visualize. But then... Uh, You're so artistic, by the way. Eh. I'm just kidding. It's just, yeah, it's, it's, your brain, which is great. That's a good process. Anyway, so uh, I'll reference uh, different translations during that time. So mm-hmm. I'm typically using, you know, uh, ESV when I study. But I've got, you know, we use the Bible on our computers, and I've got tabs open to King James, to right. uh, NASB and NIV. And I've been trying to preach, you know, on Sundays from the NIV, hmm. but that's not my main study text. Right. But it's weird. This is where, you know, nuts and bolts things kind of weird sure. to me is, is that I grew up with NIV. That's familiar. But uh, ESV has gotten more familiar in recent years uh, for study. And mm. so jumping between the two sometimes makes a cognitive dissonance. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so that's uh, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, Thursday, Friday is, you know, if you think of a sponge soaking in, then Thursday, Fridays, they're squeezing out. Mm-hmm. So I start typing. I, I'll start by typing the notes that I have just raw and then sort them out later, mm-hmm. you know, as, as I go through that. And I can do that later in the day because I don't have to, you know, uh, be as sharp as I am at first thing in the morning. But that first thing in the morning stuff is super valuable to me. So uh, Thursday mornings, we have the men's thing at, at Eric's shop. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's not a sermon prep morning but i work on typing up later that day Mm. you know in the later morning that kind of thing so tuesday wednesday uh friday saturday sunday or you know that's what is that five Uh, yeah yeah five days that are you know i got those times in the morning but then i've got big chunks of time on thursday and friday for working out the process of presentation i guess would Mm. be be that so typing up making it coherent uh, referencing uh, commentaries, that kind of thing. I'll typically do that later. Yeah. Not right away. Well, and that's healthy. That's yeah, what we learned in seminary. We did. <laughs> and uh, it's actually, uh, it feels really good to, you know, I'll come up with something like, I don't know, is that really the right way to interpret this or something? And then I'll read in a commentary and like, that guy did the same thing. Yeah. So I understand I'm not a heretic. You yeah. Know? Being careful with that, because just because it's another guy doesn't make it right. Right, but right. but at the same time, you, you know, there's uh, people have been studying the Bible for thousands of years, mm. 
So there's a lot of material and reference there to make sure that we're you know, not off, you know, going off on the uh, loony land or something like that. <laughs> so anyways, that's that's what I'll do there. Uh, Saturday, I, I think of in my mind as a buffer. Hmm. So, uh, you know, I still get up early on Saturday morning, but uh, if I'm not finished, you know, often I'll finish typing the sermon on Saturday morning or something like that. But I typically try to have it done by then so I can relax during the day on Saturday. Hmm. If not, I, you know, I got to have the sermon finished before Sunday morning. Yeah. And then Sunday morning, I uh, edit, proof, read again, Hmm. and then make the slides. Yeah. So that's Sunday morning for that. So, yeah, if typically that adds up to about 15 hours. Yeah. Sunday. So I don't want to, and I haven't really been prone to spending too much time to the expense of not spending time with people. Sure. Uh, it's easier for me to spend time with people and, uh, you know, put out fires, that kind of a thing. Right. You know, the, the tyranny of the urgence. Right. That's more the, uh, the challenge hmm. that, you know, to, Oh, I gotta spend some more time here, you know? Right. So that, that's, uh, that's just me. Yeah. In that. But it helps to be an introvert because that, <laughs> you know, yeah. Keeps me inside a lot. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, that's actually good to hear your process. I'm not sure if I've ever even asked that specifically. Yeah. Definitely sounds a lot more disciplined than mine. Oh. Yeah. I, I I, don't think I've got a certain process yet. It's like every time I sit down, what I try and do is outline the passage, and that tends to be then how, how I'll do my slides mm-hmm. because that's the worst part of the sermon is slide prep. Slides. Oh, I hate them. I don't, I don't know why it's just like I, I it's almost like I've always got them in the back of my mind as I'm writing the sermon and but it also helps me to stay accountable to presenting the sermon in text in an organized fashion mm-hmm. I think that can that can be helpful perhaps for other like-minded people uh more so mm-hmm. but yeah I'll I'll find if I start just writing down ideas or thoughts or notes I'll I, I've got such a I don't know, a narrator mind or how, how I'm going to, oh, like an orator mind, how I'm going to speak it, that it just turns into, oh, this idea and this connects this way. And then I start writing it like I'm going to say it. And then I'm basically writing the sermon prematurely. Mm. So I often end up doing write, rewrite, rewrite. So anyway. Well, I mean, everyone's got to work out their own yeah. way to, yeah. to do stuff. Well, there's no prescribed way that you right. have to like, um, well, schedule right or yeah. or method that you have to use it's just rules to keep in mind as we're studying god's word to make sure that we do it correctly yeah because after all preaching is a hugely important task i i don't know if i can conceive of any greater honor and pleasure as 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 a human being mm-hmm. than to preach the word of god to be his mouthpiece to his people it's a great privilege well, and it's a huge responsibility. Oh yes, too. Uh, with great and, power comes great responsibility. <laughs> Spider Man, yeah. Well, I think uh, they knew where it was from. I'm kidding. <laughs> Go ahead. I was showing you how cool I am. By oh yeah, you, you know yeah. the lingo of the young bucks, right. yeah. of the kids. <laughs> <laughs> no, the um, I I think of preaching as weird. If, yeah. You know, if I were to choose a word, and because I never thought of myself as being a preacher yeah once in a while i would imagine yeah what would it be like to preach a sermon you know and and usually Mm. i would have those thoughts when i was bored hearing someone else somebody else preach right so uh having grown up in the church and like i said i've heard a gazillion sermons Mm. the number of sermons that i actually remember very very small (laughs) and i keep that in mind i think okay so on that in that regard how important are sermons, right? Mm. On the other hand, it's like, this is the word of God spoken to his people and they got to pay attention. And this is huge. And it really affects me as I'm preparing it. Right. And, uh, soaking in the people stuff of the week and knowing how things are and how this relates and, you know, how to present that in a way that's, uh, uh, palatable, urgent, you know, uh, Mm. applicable, all all of that. That's really heavy. You know, it's like a burden. And then uh, to, you know, get that composed together and then present it. And this is one of the reasons I don't think I mentioned this, that I type it up as if I'm going to speak it. Right. So that I'm basically Sunday morning. All Sunday morning is for the is delivery. I'm, you know, right. I'm presenting what's been prepared already. Right. Um, that's super, super helpful. I tried early mm. on to just do outlines and 
I, I just <laughs> I couldn't. I can't do I that. I couldn't. It, I'd be a muck. I'd go all over the place. I'd be messing right. up. So, uh, so that in mind, it's like sermons are of very importance. Right. But on the other hand, I don't remember my own sermons week to week. I mean, it's <laughs> like I wrote it down, put all the effort in, into that the study and and uh, that kind of thing. Um, but it's on paper and it's presented. And for me, it's, it's out of my head at right. that point. Yeah. Uh, the, the truths and the things learned from that. Yeah. I mean, keep that, that, that mm. affects me. I mean, and often I'm preaching to myself in the first place. Oh yeah. You know, so, so there's that. Um, mm. yeah. It's also the honor of preaching. You're the one potent potentially impacted the most just because you've done all the preparation. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. It That's also it. seems weird that, you know, one guy gets up on Sunday and talks for a while. I mean, that's not like a jam session with musicians, you know, you get, it's like everybody has to sit there and listen to a soloist, you know? Yeah. I mean, on the one hand, that seems kind of strange, but on the other hand, it's like, no, this is the, the church has gathered to you and said, okay, we want you to proclaim God's word to us. Right. So that's a huge thing. It is right there. So yeah. what a huge, holy divine responsibility. Yeah. 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 So it's sobering. It well. is. And, and I hope to uh, not be boring. Sure. Or, or be entertaining or be, you know, all the, all the, the stuff that would get in the way. Right. And as it is, I feel like I, I still trip over myself quite a bit. <laughs> no, anyway, so. we all do for yeah. sure. Yeah. Well, if you're listening, this is our bonus portion where we will, uh, we'll just call it our mailbag like everyone else calls it. And we're just going to address a couple of questions that have come up um, regarding the topic of preaching. Yeah, sermons in the history of the church. That would be an interesting study. I mean, I, I think uh, Jesus did some pretty good sermons. You know, there was that one on the mountainside. I, I really like that one. Mm -hmm. um, I've <laughs> I've heard a, a different accounts of, of preachers that have said, you know, well, I'm just going to read that <laughs> for a sermon. And, you know, that's that's uh, perfect. Jesus preaching a lot. The one that's uh, in Scripture that I think is pretty interesting or, or interesting, amazing would be uh, Peter's first sermon. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like he finally, it clicked in his head. The Holy Spirit came on him and <laughs> reminded him of all that Jesus taught him, and he proclaimed that at Pentecost. Right. You know, that was, that was huge. Well, and think about in there, specifically in that Acts 2 or whatever Pentecost sermon, the example set, and that's why we say preaching demands change and mm -hmm. application right. what was the end of his sermon yeah repent and be baptized yeah I, what do we do repent well he yeah it, he answered their question exactly in that they they said what what do we do and yeah. then that's when he said yeah repent. well it generically it. brought that response from the people and mm -hmm. that was peter's response to yeah. them yeah now i can't uh speak to preaching between then and now so much other than you know, like in seminary, we're taught about Martin Lloyd Jones. You know, a great guy. Or you can read Jonathan Edwards' sermons. Um, uh, uh, you know, older times. And I think that what makes those seem stodgy or something to me is that they were apl applicable to the time. Right. And you know, context has a lot to do with, with the message. And so that it's a dynamic thing. So, uh, yeah, I haven't done a tremendous amount of study on. But sermons or it, preaching. And yeah. neither have I, but I, I can say with confidence that it has always been an important role in the church. Right. In in the order of the church, in the importance of the church. Obviously we have so many examples in the New Testament of preaching, uh prescribed means of how to do it, uh aspects that are important. But then in the early church, there's example after example. Augustine was a huge one. Mm -hmm. Preaching was just core in in the gathering of yeah. the saints. When you're supposed to do it all year long because uh, Paul told Timothy, you know, preach the word right. in season and out of season. Yeah. So all the, all the seasons. At, right. That's right. All four, all four seasons. Yeah. 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 Well, and then you get, you know, you, you were, yeah, mentioning some Reformation times. You know, you got yeah. John Calvin preach every day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the guy literally preached himself to death. Uh, he, he was very, very busy. Yeah. I'll repeat the question there. Yeah. So the question was, how do we, uh, how do we disassociate 
the valuable preaching from a pastor who has been publicly um who has been uh, publicly disqualified from ministry. So where you knew that simultaneously you're hearing a great gospel message, but also this guy's got skeletons in his closet. Um, now, I can speak to that definitively. Having a pastor who I can I, I can just qualitatively say on one level, he's one of the best preachers I've ever heard, but on the other, one of the biggest, one of the biggest sinners I've ever, I've ever known, just as far as that closeted dark sin that existed in his life simultaneously to beautiful gospel messages so you're asking the question is how how do i engage with that now i i'd say one of the reasons why i thought he was a good example for preaching is because he was good at getting out of the way of the text now he he passionately very passionately and emotionally preached the text but he did it in with using what I would say good expositional pr principles, he did it with good, good, um, good rules in in place to 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 exegetically, and that means to take the meaning out of the text. So because he was able to do that well, I can remember his sermons and then almost divorce the sin in his life from that, so that I can still with good memory, go back and at least remember the content, although the man was a devil. Yeah. Do you the, want to add to that? The, yeah, what I would add is is I think in, uh, God is God, people are people, things are things, and mm. we are not to confuse them. Sure. Right? And uh, so in in that, I, uh, I have a hard time taking uh, preachers, right, in the first place, seriously. Mm. Um, they're preaching a message, God's word, that that I can take to heart. Right. Um, but if, if a preacher takes themselves real seriously about what they're doing, you know, I have a hard time even listening to them in the first place. Oh yeah. I so, agree. uh, so then if, if a preacher, like in this case, um, that loses all credibility, right. I don't pay attention to anything they've said. Yeah. I mean, that's just me. Right. Um, but that's where I say, but God's word is holy and right, yes. just and true. Mm -hmm. And so. And uh, his spoken word when done accurately right. as well. But I wouldn't mm -hmm. go back and listen to the guy's sermons. Oh, anymore. no, no, neither I mean, would I. But I do remember with fondness um, the sermons, and I remember the growth that came from them. And that has value. One sermon I remember, now that you're uh, reminding me. Sure. Um, I don't remember the passage per se, Psalm 2, I think it was, but uh, the uh, preacher had a clay pot, hmm. right? And he had a, a iron bar, and he smashed the iron bar, or smashed the clay pot with the iron bar as a dramatic hmm. presentation of what the text says. Wow, right? the, very visceral. Uh, yeah, I remember that part. Hmm. I don't remember the rest of the entire sermon. <laughs> I mean, I don't remember any of his other sermons, really. You know, but I remember that. Sure, sure. So, I mean, I don't want to be that kind of preacher that that's what people remember. Right. You know, exactly. If they remember anything, they better remember God's word. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah. Well, and I completely agree. So the the question uh, now, uh, writing and preaching sermons. How does that affect how I listen to other sermons? I've never really liked listening to sermons in the first place. I wouldn't want to listen to me talk. You know, you can either. just stay home on weeks. I'm preaching yeah. if you want. <laughs> no, I <laughs> I'm mean, ju I'm just kidding. sorry. I don't mean it that way. I know, I'm just giving I, you a uh, time. I, uh, listening to sermons is not something that yeah. I typically do. I will read books. Mm -hmm. I mean, if somebody wrote their sermon in a book, I would love to read the, the book of it. I don't like to hear people talking to me. And, and this was, a, a, you know, like I said much earlier about uh, preaching, sometimes I don't want it to feel like you're a kid getting sent to the principal's office and scolded. Right. Uh, so much of preaching s sounds like scolding to me. Yeah. And I think that gets in the way of, of God's word is, is message. I would rather yeah. read it in a book. So that's just me. You know, a lot of people, they would much prefer to hear a sermon than read a book. <laughs> so, you know. Well, and, well, and I think for me, it's both. Um, there's a value and uniqueness to each delivery system that way. But if I'm in the car, man, I or working, I love to listen to sermons. It's always been really 
um, edifying for me personally to do so. Um, you know, whether it's uh, Alistair Begg or Paul Tripp or Mark Dever, whoever else, you know, even back in the day, Mark Driscoll with yeah. excellent sermons there. And so, yeah, really, really have enjoyed that. What it does for me at this point in time is keep me grounded. You yeah. know, it, it's really good to not become overly saturated with my own practices of preaching or my own voice, but to hear somebody else in here. Um, oh yeah, no, there are guys out there doing much better quality work. I got to step it up. So that's a, a way okay. that is valuable for me personally. Well, maybe that's one reason I don't want to listen to other preachers. <laughs> so, so, but I was going to say, you uh, want to get new better, huh? Bach yeah. wrote some pretty good sermons. Yeah. yeah. Did he? Didn't have any words, but yeah. 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 Just the, the music, to me that. Yeah. It always comes back to music with you. Yeah. That's no, weird. So. <laughs> it's weird that God put me in this spot to be preaching sermons. <laughs> when when right? you're a musician. Well, well not just to... the mindset about all of it anyways. Sure. I think, okay, that that's so weird to me. Right. But, and yet, that's what he's doing. So, yeah. Yeah. Sobering. Yeah. Yeah.